seen what may turn out to be the most magnificent year in the era of technology, this might truly be the year when you could actually purchase your first self-driving cars from your favorite store in some parts of the world. So that's an amazing news for all of us. However, you cannot do that in Allahabad and you cannot do that in India. Now, my talk has a mystery element which will be revealed later on. Despite all these facts, why is it still that the entire world, all the top-notch automobile companies, all the top-notch universities still, still be looking at this one great country, India? What makes us so unique in this technology? Okay, uh, let me talk about uh, some historical things first. Technology has always taken time to come into our lives. However, once it does come into our lives, it changes our lives like anything. It grows at an unprecedented, at an exponential phase. Okay, take the internet as an example. Now, to me personally, as a professor, I cannot imagine preparing my lectures without the use of internet. And I'm told most of the audience here are students. So remember the torture that your parents got through in attending those long, boring professor lectures without those sweet little internet pleasures in between. <laughs> it's completely unimaginable how internet has changed us. It grew like anything. The same is true with self-driving cars. Standing at the cliff of this remarkable technology and to ultimately see it change the very fundamental picture of something that we are completely passionate about is just like experiencing the majestic history being created right before us. The self-driving cars are coming, they come at a very rapid pace. So ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelts because you in the next few years are going to experience true history in the making. Okay, now, so I'll talk about uh, all about the self-driving cars and what's going to happen, what is the future like. So first, let's uh, stick to the basics. Let's see what these cars actually are. How is it and who gives birth to these vehicles? Now, the technology behind the self-driving cars is no rocket science. It's very simple. Imagine being in a foreign piece of land where you are heavily drunk, you went there to have some nice time and you are lost somewhere. The technology that enables you walk across the country and find your way out is the same technology which makes these cars by themselves. So that's simple. Okay, you need answers to a few basic questions. First of all, you need to know, okay, what all is happening around because you really need to know what's all around. Uh, these self-driving cars, for that matter, have sensors. They've got all these sophisticated sensors which tell them, okay, this is what, these are the different vehicles around. There's a traffic light out there, and that is where you are operating. And you need to know more, okay? So you need to know where am I, where am I going? So some, you ask somebody, and somebody gives you a tourist map and says, here is where you are. You can localize yourself with respect to the landmarks around, so you know where in the world you are. And then you need to plan your way out, you need to go ahead. So in this particular scenario, you can say that, okay, I could, then, uh, I could change lane left and go ahead. You could say I could change lane right and overtake in this part of the world, we follow a two left driving behavior. Or you could more simply say that okay, uh, the car in front is being driven by a woman and you know that you never trust women. So changing lane left and changing lane right are two very, very difficult things to do. You might be happy to just follow the lady. Okay, now. So we need to teach these vehicles how to drive themselves, so they need to attend some schools. And there are two very famous schools of thoughts in motor driving. The first one which you will get if you learn driving from your dad, who will tell you that, boy, you could do this thing, you could do that thing, never trust the ladies, and uh, trust the old people, and drive slow, and calculate all these combinations, combination of everything. And then use all your wisdom and experience and everything to say this in life is what I need to do. Uh, the youngsters, if you uh, learn driving from your pal, he'll say it's very simple. Just use your reflexes, just use your instincts, find out what's hot around. Okay, and just go in for that. So that's simple. Uh, which school of thought do our vehicles come from? 
Uh, we train them for a mixture of both. So they learn from the dad and they learn from the peer. And that is simple. Now, once you know that, okay, that is what I need to do, then it's all basically your motor skills, your skill of handling the steering, of the brake, of the throttle, and that gets you going. That's fair enough. Okay, so that's how these vehicles will ultimately come. They come in units, they come in tens, they come in hundreds, they would be all around. Now, it's important to understand what implications do they have on our current traffic? What does our current traffic look after all these vehicles coming to being? Now, in order to best visualize the picture, let me localize the talk to where we are recording it, which is this wonderful country, India. In India, we extract out extra out of every system that we have. So we take out extra toothpaste uh, in the morning to the extra bit of oil from the oil can to fitting up extra people uh, in all the roads. I see that we have fit in extra people, which is more than the capacity for which it was built. So we always fit in those extra bit of people and we also fit in extra vehicles on our road. Okay, now if you are a traffic specialist, if you come from a more sane world, you will say that this road was built for complete three vehicles at the time, it's a three lane road. We packed in five vehicles in here. Uh, packing more vehicles, you have more traffic bandwidth, you have more traffic bandwidth, you get more efficiency, so that is awesome, that is wonderful. And look at what our counterparts in the Western world, in the more uh, organized and in the more sane world do. They say one vehicle and one lane. Okay, so the road was made for uh, four vehicles at a time, so four vehicles at a time will move. Okay, so we were like the uh, Friday undergraduate crowds. Friday undergraduate students, you cannot tell them how to act, how to go, how to behave, they frame their own rules. Uh, the organized world is more like the Monday morning school kids, so one will follow and then they form a, a train of school children, one after the other, they are so organized. Now, whenever we talk about transportation, so immensely diverse. We have small moving vehicles, we have very fast moving vehicles, we have very slow vehicles, we have manually driven vehicles, we have very small vehicles, we have giant trucks. All that occupying the same load infrastructure, which is what makes it very really dynamic in nature. So, any kind of system is basically made uh, around for some kind of uh, inputs. Uh, this talk was made around expecting some kind of people in the crowd. If there would have been too many ladies, I wouldn't have uh, made those ladies jokes. Lucky they weren't. Okay, now what happens is that uh, the traffic rules in a more western world, in a more organized world, they are made expecting traffic which is homogeneous, expecting traffic which operates at a certain speed, expecting that all cars are more or less alike. And what happens when this wonderful technology and with the cars moving with this wonderful technology, they exponentially rise in this world, Car manufacturers start producing micro vehicles, they don't require a human inside. It may be just your uh, little car which is delivering a love letter from you straight to your lover so that you don't want the postal departments in between. Okay, so that's a very small vehicle. So now, should we stick with the rule which says that, okay, one lane to be occupied by one vehicle, or we say that you can pack in as many vehicles as you want. You can operate at as many speed as you want, because they are fast vehicles and they are very slow vehicles. Do we force the slow vehicle to actually delay traffic of the faster vehicles rather than allowing some kind of overtakings, which might be possible if you do not go with the existing traffic rules? So, the key point being, whenever we get systems, whenever systems get inputs which are extremely diverse, the rules of the game do not hold, the rules of the game need to be changed, when the current traffic systems are occupied by vehicles which will be completely outside our imagination right now, extremely diverse, the current traffic rules will not obey, and uh, the traffic systems at the Western world, in the organized world, will become more busy. Okay, so we will see a lot of vehicles crowding away, nobody will uh, believe in the rules, and all those exciting things will happen. So the traffic will become extremely dynamic, it will become extremely interesting, it will become extremely chaotic. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what is the future of traffic. Uh, in this part of the country, we are very conscious about one little thing. 
if a smaller prestige vehicle's by chance happens to overtake us, that vehicle had it. <laughs> the revenge will be taken at top speed. We don't care about the lots then. The revenge will be taken very... Uh, should these vehicles be allowed to have aggressive? Everybody they knows they have greater control power, greater sensing power, greater vision making power. Just allow them to be aggressive. Just allow them to, be, to make full use of the systems they are operating at. Uh, so, after all this, go completely crazy on road, which have all these aggressive driving close overtakes, well, it is possible. Uh, if you've seen the Allahabad traffic, and you say that, that this is not the most wild that uh, the, the vehicles can get. If I add in more vehicles, they'll start uh, following each other, which is not a very interesting traffic for that matter. So, uh, it definitely, the by simulation studies, is possible to engineer vehicles which go completely crazy, and that is a picture of the future transportation systems when these vehicles occupy. Okay, so uh, India is obviously not the best traffic system, even though it might be of the future. Uh, Obama is doing nothing to make New York India, but India obviously is trying to make its traffic like uh, New York. So where does it all come into? Where does the discrepancy happen? It so happens that in any system, you have some very slow vehicles which delay the complete traffic, so you would like to probably take them away and throw them out of the window. Uh, fast forward a few decades, you have a traffic system which is occupied by all these nice little self-driving uh, self vehicles. You say what is the bottleneck of the traffic which is slowing the traffic, it is that woman driving in front. She doesn't know how to drive. Just throw the lady out of the window, also throw the man out of the window, he is slow. And occupied by all these very nice self-driving cars, which is very interesting. Uh, the cars can talk to each other and they can decide what to do. There is no human inside. So you'll see a lot of cars talking to each other and making decisions. Uh, one little simulation that I have here, in the first one, all the vehicles decided these are going to be the rules of the game. That is how we want to move. In the second one, only one of the center of the road is serviceable. So. Here these vehicles could talk to each other, they all played by the rules of the game, and it went very well, they could decide this is what we all need to do. Uh, it happens there's much more than that. It happens that there's absolutely much more than that. Not only can the vehicles talk to each other, the vehicles can talk to the traffic lights, they can talk to the road planning system, they can uh, talk to the transportation management centers, they can talk to the merger controls, they can talk to everybody. So, I haven't put it up, the best visualization you can have is just imagine a uh, pool for speak the same language. So, we could have all kinds of interesting systems which overall coordinate the entire traffic. So, the potential of that information interchange, because all vehicles are self-driving, it is immense. You could virtually make the best transportation system which is very nicely coordinated. <coughs> okay. So, uh, I'm getting towards the end of the talk. So, at this point of time, I really become the godman with a nice pool of followers to go. So, I request you to take my words granted as it is without questions. Okay, so let's try to put up the top gear of our driving vehicle. Let's try to get crazy and let's try to see, okay, what happens very far into the future. Where are we going? What all does, uh, how all does it go? Uh, let's start with a simpler example first. We have a transportation system which by our modeling is omnipresent, it's omnipresent, it is omnipotent. It's not. It knows everything. So probably it knows that I am a wonderful little guy who never gets late for meetings and I am getting late for meetings, it will schedule me up early. It knows that you are getting late for your TEDx talk, it will prioritize you. Uh, it knows that you are going for it knows that a professor is getting late for his lecture, it will put it under least priority. Let him get late for his <laughs> So you could virtually go away with all these blue lights. All the vehicles decide which gets a priority, which doesn't get a priority. Everybody operates by priority. Uh, much further in the future is an amazing little picture. Now we know that the uh, demand for transportation, we know that the vehicles are rising at rates which is more than our government can afford to build roads, which is a very depressing story. 
This technology solves many of the problems, not all. So in the future, we would have vehicles with completely unconventional designs, which operate in this nice little scenario. Uh, you could have my vehicle drive under your vehicle, truly. Your vehicle could drive under my vehicle. Uh, both our vehicles could form high-speed moving platoons. Or we could both uh, together, our vehicles could both a public bus or a metro, uh, compress the dynamically so that it becomes a pedestrian, or you just say that I don't like the traffic here, I'm a rich man. Our uh, vehicles could nearly fly. The future, the very far future is unclear, it's dynamic. However, one thing can be taken for granted that the future is immensely, immensely interesting. It is fascinating. So, towards the end, I'm a professor. Everybody here would know that I leave my classes with a nice little homework. So, the homework I'll probably give you people is, when you move outside and you see the main road outside the campus, please try to visualize what it would look like in the next decade, what it would look like in the next couple of decades. And years from now, when you see the change happening, when you see all these crazy little things happening, just remember which awesome person told this all to you at first and where did you all visualize it at the very beginning. Thank you so much.